What's up, y'all? Good morning. I'm going to uh, <laughs> take a page out of my boy um, MJ Harris's video. Get in here. Get in here. Get in here. Yes. Get in here. <laughs> um, I don't have time to do a what's up, y'all, because I am getting ready to get on um, this uh, event this morning. Y'all get to watch me beat my face, uh, which is like the first video I did. My first what's up, y'all. I was beating my face. Um, and uh, yeah, so... Um, I'm getting ready to do the finding home, um, leaving the abusive relationship that is America. Um, and this is a perfect time to have this conversation that is bu bubbling up inside of me. It's a what's up, a what's up y'all video that started yesterday, but it's a perfect day as we talk about Independence Day to have this conversation, this conversation about the ways in which, um, the ways in which we are out of balance, y'all. The ways in which we are out of balance. And I want us to align, which means that we have to get out of the thinking. Thank you. I'm here for the eyebrows, too. Um, we have to get out of the thinking that keeps us um, tied to these systems, right? That keeps us tied to these systems of uh, inequity and injustice. They keep us tied to these systems that murder and kill black people. That disproportionately disenfranchise black folks, right? And people of color. So let me be clear. When I say black folks, what I'm really saying to you is everywhere in the world, everywhere in the world, the relationship that whiteness has established with blackness exists. So it's the reason why the darkest people every place are treated like shit, <laughs> right? It doesn't matter if you're dark in Asia. It doesn't matter if you're dark in China, in, uh, um, in Africa. It doesn't matter if you're dark in Central and South America. The darkest people in the world have the most disparate outcomes, and that is called anti-blackness. So when I say black people, what I'm really saying is that everybody in the middle get free as soon as we get done with the latter. I've talked about this before. But here's what's on my mind today. I'm sitting here, you know, I've been thinking a lot about, about money because you all know that I'm doing um, buy back black debt, right? Uh, and so part of the reason that I'm doing buy back black debt is because it feels really important to me. One, that relation, that, that we that we've got to be in right relationship, right relationship in the material realm and right relationship in the physical realm. That's part of the assignment. That's what has to happen if we expect to at all, you know, like at all get out of the shit we're in, right? And so what occurred to me today, right? What occurred to me last night that I did, like I said, as a what's up y'all, but I'm going to do it right now, right? Is that there is a way in which whiteness is in a relationship um, is in a relationship in the world where in order for it to do right, it has instituted the carceral state in order to do that, right? The reason you don't, I, I would like to think, we all would like to think that like we do right because right is moral and right is good, right? That's how we all like to think that, but whether or not that is the case, we have to interrogate that, Right? Because the truth of the matter is, there are a lot of places where we are not in right relationship. And we haven't bothered to fix that, not because, you know, not because it's not the right thing to do, but because nobody's forced us to, right? Because there isn't some external mechanism to make us do right. And so we just haven't, you know? And that is certainly the relationship of black, of white people and whiteness to blackness, you know? I was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it true. Like, here's the deal. If you walked in to Starbucks, right? Because I assume that of the 287 people, 82 people, however many people that are on this live with me right now, that you come here because you feel like I'm going to give you something that feels like, um, uh, that feels like a, an education, right? Like you're going to learn something from me, right? Which is in this economy, in a capitalist construct, uh, is a resource, right? Now, I didn't create the system that said you're supposed to pay for resources. Capitalism created that system, right? And then capitalism sis systematically, well, then capitalism decided that black people were resources and then started charging for human bodies, right? So, that system, that system that said, you know, there's resource and the resource is exchanged by money. 
has been in existence, right? Um, and it's the way in which whiteness polices the extraction of capital, right? It's how whiteness, it's how whiteness polices the extraction of capital. So let me give you an example. You walk into Starbucks, you walk into Starbucks and Starbucks as an institution of capitalism has employed the, the carceral state to ensure that the um, resources of Starbucks are not pillaged. You walk in, there is a counter. Sometimes there is a guard. Sometimes, um, you know, at the end of the day, the machines get locked up. There are all of these, in, all of these structures, right, to, to um, protect the capital of Starbucks. And so when you walk in every day to get your resource from cap, um, from Starbucks, your resource is a cup of coffee, a grande, a mochaccino, or whatever it is you're ordering over there, and you exchange your coins for that resource. You give them your $6, $7, I don't know how much Starbucks coffees are running for at this particular time, but you give them that money, right? And you give them that, I'd like to think, we would like to think, then we give them that money because it's the right thing to do, right? Because it's a system that we live in, which we say we exchange resource for um, for resource, right? In some ways, it's still, a, in some ways, it's a barter system. We've just shrunk down what the bartering is, right? We've made it mean something very specific. It's a green bill or some coins, right? But ideally, it's a, it's a ideally it is you give me a resource and I give you the resource in exchange, right? Owning the means of production. I hear y'all, right? And yes, and owning the means of production, but we're going to complicate that, right? Because there's, there is, in this right now moment, a democratization of the means of production, right? There's always been, there. I'm going to come back to that. You Don't get me off my, <laughs> that was a good comment. Don't get me off my point, right? Anyway, we would like to think that we go in and we give them their money because that's the right thing to do, right? And the question is, if Starbucks took down their counter, took down the um, officer at the door, the security guard, just, uh, you know, and just sat out and said, come in and make your, you know, like you don't even have to make your coffee. Somebody else will make it. You don't even have to make it. Somebody's going to make it and then they're going to hand it to you and you're going to uh, hand them the money. But there's nothing there to control whether you do or you don't. Would you still give them the resource for buying the coffee? Would you do it? Now, let me catch you up and let me get to your point. Let me get to my point. We would like to all think that, yes, of course we would, right? We're not going to steal from a giant corporation that steals from us every day. We're not going to do that. <laughs> no, 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 no. We're not going to steal. Let me tell you that I don't believe you. Or maybe I do believe you, but the reason that I believe you is because there's a relationship that you have with Starbucks that says that Starbucks, whatever it's offering is valuable enough that whether or not they employ the carceral state or not, you recognize that it is an appropriate exchange. And so you do it. I have, I'm, I'm just going to tell the truth right now, y'all. I have one of them videos, the Haley video, let's say. 4.8 million views on the Haley video. And the Haley, the Haley video was very specifically for white people, right? I was telling white people about what it is that I see as a, um, as a, a gap in information about how they're having conversations about race, right? If, if white, because I do not, this is why we get back to the means of production. I own my means of production, my means of production is, are, is the education that I have gotten, the um, however many years of lived experience, 43, of lived experience that has allowed me to understand and dissect the ways in which my black life intersects with these systems of white suprem supremacist delusion, all of the ways that other peoples have, the sociology, psychology, organizational management, education that I have, all of those things have become my means of production. Right. Um, I don't own the, the delivery system. Zuckerberg owns the delivery system, but I do own the, the means of production, this voice, these thoughts, these ideas. Right. And I don't have if if the white audience 
in this, that watch my videos said this is worth $5. It's worth a grande latte. And each person chose to do that. I would have, I have $750,000 in my bank account. I would, black people aren't rich, not because we do not have the resource. Black people aren't rich because white people do not value the resource that black people put out into the world. Because you're over here learning, laughing, kikiing, having enlightenments, having wake ups, all of a sudden changing your life, transformed, your family's transformed, and you have not sown a seed. And you think I gave you $5 on Monday for your ground, my grande latte, so I'm gonna take another grande latte on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, but all of that's free because I gave you $5 on Monday. But because I don't employ the carceral state to protect my means of production, I don't employ the mechanisms and machinations of capitalism to give you access. This work isn't behind a paywall. I don't tell y'all that you have to um, sign up or you can't get access. I show up and assume that we want to be in right relationship with one another. I assume that we want to be in a relationship of reciprocity because that's the that's the uh, that's the culture I want to go back to. That's what I would like for us to recreate. And we talk about we want to get someplace new, but we want to do the old shit. If you are consuming the content of black people at this time, and you are like, I paid you on Monday, I'll gladly pay you on Monday for a hamburger on Wednesday, Friday, Thursday, and Tuesday. Stop. You are out. You are out of spiritual and economic alignment, because if you went to Starbucks every single day, you would have paid them twenty five dollars for the week. And I'm probably doing my math wrong. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, Monday through Friday. <laughs> right. Right. And you wouldn't have said, oh, I gave you five dollars on Monday. Thanks for my coffee on for the rest of the week. You wouldn't do it. And, but in part, I, I say that you wouldn't do it because. The carceral state demands that you do not, right? And so the question is, are you only in right relationship because of the car? Are you only in right relationship because white supremacist systems may demand you to be? And this comes back to, you know, the thing that I posted yesterday on my page about the epigenetic nature of white supremacist delusion and the epigenetic nature of white supremacist delusional violence and harm on the lives of um, black folks and brown folks and whoever else it is that's impacted, right? Which is, how is it that, right, is that, did the carceral state get implemented because the epigenetic nature of white people is to steal? I would like to believe that that is not the truth. I would like to believe that that is not the truth. But I can't tell. Because black people give freely. Freely. But not for free. Right? But when we say freely, we mean not protected by the carceral state. Not protected by the henchmen of capitalism in order for you to get access to it. But the inclination is to steal. That's extraction, right? And so I, and be clear, an epigenetic wound is only, is still at its core, it's a soul wound. So even if, let's say even if there is an epigenetic predisposition to steal, steal people, steal resources, steal whatever it is, right? Which is actually, it's interesting, right? Because that's the story that white supremacist delusion has told about black people for time. Right. Black people still. You know, that's why they that's why I've been followed around so many stores, because there's some story that I steal. But what's really happening is a sense of epigen epigenetic uh, guilt and shame for the ways in which, uh, you know, for the ways in which we've been in other places. Right. Here's the deal. Even if that were true, it's a soul wound. And you know how you fix a soul wound? 
by fixing your soul, by fixing the relationship that manifests as a result of the soul wound. So here's what I'm just going to say. Here's my charge to white people. I don't care what number it is you decide. I don't care what number it is you decide. You can decide it's $2. You can decide it's $5. You can decide it's $50. You can decide it's $100. Right? I don't care. What I do care about is that you actually practice being in right relationship. So if you watch my videos and you got an education, run, send me, send me a Venmo. Sonia Renee Taylor. You can PayPal me at SonyaRenee at gmail.com. And, and do it every time you watch. So you should figure out in your budget, how much do I have per video? Now, I would offer, if you have a habit you do every single day, don't you pay me less than what you give them. Don't you give me less than what you give Starbucks or the cigarette company or Folgers or whatever other daily. And don't you do it for any, any black person whose content it is that you engage in. So again, figure out what your budget is, but don't come to my store and steal from me because I refuse to kill you for it. I'm not going to murder you to do right. I'm not going to imprison you to do right. I'm going to spiritually implore you to do right because you balance yourself. You balance the relationship. I'm going to go on ahead and pin, pin this. Thank you. For somebody who just put my Venmo up here, uh, it's pinned now. That's my Venmo. And again, Sonia Renee at Gmail is my um, is my uh, PayPal. Um, so here's the deal. There's a way. In, there's a way out of this, and the way out of this is a new practice. That's the way out. The way out is to do things differently than you have historically done them. That is how we shift and change this situation. So. I don't care what your budget is. I don't like, that's not the point. The point is that I want you to be in the practice of doing right, of getting in right relationship, of getting into balance. Absolutely. Absolutely. You would go and you would spend $5 every single day to do something. You go and you put gas in your tank every time you need to drive. You go and you give the resources. And in part, again, like I said, it's because the carceral state will chase you down, hunt you down, kill you, right? But part of redoing the world, retooling the world is deciding that that is not the way we have to be in relationship to each other. We do not have to be in relationship to each other that way. We can be in right relationship because we choose to be in right relationship. And as we choose to be in right relationship, we, re, we retool the soul wounds that have kept us out of white relationship. We reassemble the, our inner anatomy towards it. So if you imbibe the content of black creators, black whoever it is, I want you to figure out what is the budget that you that you set aside to partake of that. The same way you keep your light bills on. Because the 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 wealth gap is not just some magical thing that happened. The wealth gap is that white people chose not to pay black people. They pay for everything else and then we're like but y'all will do it for free. We will give people free houses, but we will never give them to black people. We will, we will give people land for like a dollar, but we won't give it to black people. We won't give it to indigenous people and it's their land. Your practice in real time is how we change this. Your practice in your everyday life. You're practicing your every single day life. I wouldn't need it. We, we wouldn't need to buy back black debt if white people just paid for the things they took for us. We wouldn't even need this program. This project, this initiative would not exist if white people just equitably paid for that which it is that they take from us. That's a word. That's a simple word. It's the truth, though. It's the absolute truth. And so I'm, I assume that if you come and you kick it in my space, if you come in here 
to take to take from me to take to take the lemonade stand that I put out on my table. I put out a lemonade stand and I say the lemonades and the lemonade is pay what you want. And some of y'all still come in here and just take it. I trust that we can do better. I trust that we desire to be better. I trust if you are part of what I'm doing, it's because you deeply desire to be in right relationship, to have your humanity restored. This is the practice. And it's not just a practice for Sonia. It's a practice in every area of your life. Where do I take? Where do I take but not give back? Where do I take and assume that like the one thing I gave that one time covers all the things that I take forever? What you mean you want flowers on your anniversary? I gave them to you on your first anniversary. Motherfucker, we've been married for 25 years. <laughs> we can do better, y'all. I'm going to put on these eyelashes. May, may this be an independence day of your soul. May it be an independence day of your spiritual reconciliation with humanity. My PayPal is Sonia Renee, S-O-N-Y-A-R-E-N-E-E -E -E, at gmail.com. <laughs> My Venmo is Sonia Renee Taylor. Venmo is easier for me than PayPal, but whatever, it's fine. <laughs> but again, don't let this just be me. Do right. Do right. And again, don't get in your guilt. I only have $5, I only have $2. It's not about that. It is about doing right. Do right. Get independent from the carceral punitive state that is capitalism and is the United States of America. Get independent from that. Get independent up here. Get independent from white supremacist delusion. That's your assignment today. I love y'all. Bye.